Let us open our Bibles. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 34 to 37. The Holy Scriptures says, And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit the man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? End of our reading. Our Father in heaven, the God who created all of us, the loving God who gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, the true Messiah. Lord, we call upon Your name today that we may find understanding in this world of turmoil. May Your words edify may your words equip us and may your words encourage us today as we wait for that blessed hope your son jesus christ imminent return in your name i pray jesus the messiah amen mark chapter 8 is worthy of reading and in the verses that I have read earlier, Jesus gathered the people with his disciples. And he began to say unto them, Whosoever will come. It is an invitation for those who hear the truth. Those who were set free. That if you are moved by the Spirit of God, you can freely follow Jesus. You can freely come to Him, not only during His time when He was here on this earth, but also in our time today. What a beautiful, beautiful invitation. But dear friends, we need to understand that there are three major commands in this verse alone that we need to understand and to deeply deeply think because these commands are extremely excruciatingly painful to follow the first uh, jesus said if you want to follow after me, Jesus Christ says, deny yourself. Deny myself. Now, this is very difficult indeed to understand because human nature, after the fall of our first Adam, the first created being the first human being who committed sin against the law of god after the fall everyone followed himself everyone obeyed the carnal flesh the law of the flesh everyone wants to satisfy his or her own heart against the will of God beloved to deny oneself is to die 
from the old sinful self and by the power and grace of God through Jesus Christ, his son, be resurrected into a new man. This is what we call the experience of a new birth, a rebirth that does not need to go back to the womb of our mothers, but a rebirth of the heart, the rebirth of the new mind following Jesus, denying ourselves means to understand that we have been violating the commands of God, that we have been in transgression and we have been in iniquity. And now we must turn away from those iniquities and obey the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ to deny self is to die from our old sinful life in order for us to experience the new birth of life in the Spirit of Christ. Friends, no one tells us the truth except Jesus, and He commands us to deny ourselves the second command is a progression of hardship is an embrace of suffering just like jesus christ had suffered when he was on this earth he said take up the cross take up specifically his cross the shame of the Roman cross when he was accused of being guilty of blasphemy, claiming to be the Son of God. And people could not believe that he is the Son of the living God. And so he was condemned to take up the cross. The Roman Empire's cruel punishment for those who violate the emperor worship the roman worship the roman way of life is the roman worship the roman way of life still alive today yes yes friends it is still being practiced today the leading superpower of the united states still embraces the culture of the romans its religion and even its practices of the past it was handed down from generations to generations and now in our time it became so much worse that even the Romans will be ashamed of what we have been doing in their name in their pagan worship in their pagan overlords name so take up your cross meaning to say we are not to conform to this culture of hedonism we must not allow ourselves to be slaves of consumerism we are duty bound if we are faithful to God to reject and not to conform to the education of this world, but only conform to the education of the Word of God. Friends, the world's culture led by the United States and led by this superpower religious entity, the Roman Catholic, are leading us all to deception and delusion to disobey the word of God and Jesus said if you want to follow me take up your cross take up the burden take up the will to go against the tide of immorality to go against the tide of falsehood to go against and not 
be a slave to the system of lies, deceit, and corruption that is commonly and acceptably and widespread practice in the world today. Deny yourself, take up the cross. The third command, which is an embrace to faithfulness, even that will lead to death, is the words of Jesus that says, follow me. Jesus followed the cross to its final conclusion. And even until death, he obeyed the will of the Father to testify that it can be done. It is finished. That the devil's system, that the darkness of this world has no power against the few who are free to follow Jesus Christ. Beautiful statement. Beautiful statement. And then comes to chapter 8, verse 35 of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus emphasized that if we are so intense in accumulating wealth, so intense for profit and gain just to save our own skin our own selves friends the irony is that when we try to save ourselves even though we know that these principles that we are following of the world is not what god commands us to do and if we know that this is a compromise that this is disobedience to to the word of god friends the irony is if we fatten ourselves because we ignore and deny the gospel we will lose our lives for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it the paradox of life is real when you desire worldly goods pleasure sensuality and even the earthly earthly culture of corruption and scams and fraudulent dishonest gains friends trouble comes into your home how many marriages had been broken in the name of money making how many homes had been broken in the name of finding money how many societies and countries had been forsaken in the name of bribery and corruption friends verse 36 is a superlative question a hyperbole that does not need an answer but it can move the heart for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul Jesus challenges you and me today and he reiterated this in verse 37 or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? These questions addresses our basic human need, our basic human longings. Number one, who am I? 
Number two, what am I doing in this world? Number three, where am I going? These basic human longings are universal because no amount of money can satisfy if you have an identity problem, if you have an identity crisis in your life. What shall you give in exchange for your soul? Beloved, those of you who are listening to this broadcast, how many generations of billionaires and millionaires and those that are considered rich have been at peace with themselves and their families? What have they done in this world? Have they been fully satisfied and fulfilled? Have they been filled with what they are longing for in this world? There are so many examples in our world today, friends, that money had not only broken marriages and destroyed families and lives and children, but also money had never satisfied the human heart. In fact, it had brought stress to the human soul and burden and pressure. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is still inviting us today to consider to come unto him to cast all our cares upon him because only Jesus cares for all of us you know friends greed had destroyed the world you know, friends, greed will continue to destroy human beings. I'd like to make an appeal to you today to find Jesus Christ because He is still, He could still be found today before eternally all will be lost what shall it profit if you have money in the bank and you're dying in your bed what does it profit if you have money and you have arrived to your success but you have destroyed your spouse, your husband, your wife, your partner's life. What does it profit if you have buildings, if you have properties, if you have businesses? And even if you have so much bank account, secret commodities, in your portfolios and stocks and shares what does it profit if your child is into drugs if your child is wayward or your children are not obeying you or your children are rebelling against you or worst if your children hates you because you have spent more time in money making than in time wisely used bonding with them only Jesus Christ is the, tr is the truth friends only Jesus is our source the word of God testifies 
So today, I would like to invite you to consider the word of Jesus in Mark chapter 8, verses 34 to 37. And if you feel and if you think that the words of Jesus is right, I invite you to make a change. And come, come to Jesus. He will accept you just as you are.